for this time around on the VH project, we're going to do a few things to the engine. The painting's finally done, the engine bay can move on to the fun stuff. I'm going to remove the pilot bearing with the special puller and replace it with a new one. Uh, and also fit the new rear main seal, because that's always a good thing to do, because uh, pretty much every car leaks from there after 200,000 k's or so. And then we're going to put the engine into the engine bay and test fit it with the headers, because we think there might be some uh, some clearance issues we might have to bash out with a big hammer, so we'll have a look at that. And then hopefully, if we get time, we'll fit the clutch and fit a few gearbox cross members and a few other, maybe suspension and a few other little things. So yeah, let's plan for today, let's get to it. Okay, so here we have the uh, LS engine. And in here I've got the spigot bearing or pilot bearing, which uh, is a good thing to replace when you've got all this part. Now some people, uh, in the past use like a, a grease trick where you shove a whole heap of grease in there absolutely pack the underside of it and then you use like a dowel or something and bash that in with a hammer and all the grease because there's nowhere else to go the easiest way for the grease to come out is to actually push the spigot bearing or bush out uh, so that's one trick that lots of people try and do but you can't do it on an LS engine because apparently there's a Welsh plug on the back of that and all the pressure, instead of coming out this way, it just goes the opposite way and pushes the Welsh plug into the sump, which is something that we don't want. So what we need to do is use a special bearing puller, like this one, which is like a slide hammer. And how it works, you find the right size attachment, and then as I twist this down, you'll see the splits will open up and get wider and wider and then that should grab enough on the uh, the other side of the bearing and then we slide hammer it out. So let's give it a go. Okay, I've got the right size tip now for the uh, bearing puller. So this should go in nice and snug. Come on. Oh, I did just before. Come on. There we go. And then we'll tighten her up. Cool, heaps. Okay, now we just uh, knock her out. And there you go. Definitely good to have the right tool for the job. Okay, now it's time to put on a new rear main seal, which I have here. Now, usually when you get one of these, it just comes with the seal itself, but this one comes with the whole cover plate to make sure it lines up perfectly when it goes on. They used to sell just this by itself, uh, but people were having trouble getting it on. They thought they got it on right, but then as soon as they got the whole motor back together, it started pissing out oil again. So now they've changed it quite early on, I think, like 2000 or something. Uh, they do this big cover plate, which seems like a good idea. So let's get into it. Talk all your bolts and spanner check after it's been sitting for a bit or run in. And now that the uh, gasket's half set, gasket goo, I'll just yeah, tweak them all up a little bit. Have a really finger tight before. Done. Cool, so just put a little bit of Loctite on this spigot bush, which is a new one, a conversion piece. It's uh, the same width as the old one, but obviously it's got this little spacer plate which makes it uh, stick out a little bit more. Obviously that's what's needed for the, uh, for the conversion. So it's going to be tight, but let's get her in here nice and snug. And hopefully that will bash in with a little drift, which I'm going to use this socket for. Make it going nice and even. Cool. Dunsky. New dowel is needed. That's just a little bit longer to fit the uh, adapter plate as well. So you bash that out with the bolt on that side or something else. And then 
knock the new ones back in. Done. The dowels are in. Should be able to fit this shiny new left hand side starter motor adapter plate. So that will just go straight over the dowels. Blanking plate here, starter motor relocated there. A the little bolt up, new longer bolts. So here we are at it again. Trying to remove some of the interior stuff this time and uh, swap over some parts. Here's one of the other conversion bits that you need. I've taken, just taken out the VH pedal box because um, this one is a cable clutch type. So the cable usually goes through there onto the clutch cable and clutch sits in there also. One point to note, try not to lose this little clip that sits down in there. And over here we have a VL pedal box. Uh, now this one is already set up for a hydraulic clutch. So it's got a few extra little bits and pieces, slightly different shape, but should all bolt up to the VH nice and easy. So we might just keep this as it is with the welded on spaces. And because this rubber flaps in reasonable nick, it might save us a little bit of vibration or something. Not really sure what it does exactly, but yeah, we'll bolt it in. Got a little hole out here for the uh, hydraulic clutch, and off we go. Today on the VH, doing a bit of wiring. So, here we go. This is uh, the old wiring inside. Tidied that up a little bit so we've got room to lay the new stuff. And swap the pedal box out as well. So we've got the VL pedal box there, which is good for the hydraulic clutch. So, out of all the wiring that we pulled out of the VU, didn't need half of it. All these colourful bits I have on this side of me, this sort of stuff we don't need anymore. Um, and we've got the rest of the wiring loom all nicely cut up from Dave. So here is all the leftover wiring that we don't need. Most of this stuff is all just lights and indicators, fuses, other random stuff. So a lot of spaghetti that you don't need. And uh, Subarino Dave has uh, chopped up the main, the end of the main engine loom. So most of this stuff's all the sensors and injectors and fuel rail. And then finally get to the fun bit here that he's uh, made up for us. So it's nice and easy to uh, hook up. There's only about five wires or maybe a few more. 10 wires tops that we have to hook up. He's got earth, reverse light. We've got relay for the injectors, relay for fuel pump. And he's labeled that nicely. Uh, we also have cooling fan triggers, a speedo gauge power for fuel pump and some fuses for ignition and stuff so all we really need to do is hook up constant battery ignition switch and what's that 12 volt power switched battery positive so yeah these sort of main few wires and unearth and should be good to start up here's something else that I've bought to help with the wiring about 50 bucks from eBay we got some uh, some rocket switches here. Turn on your ignition and then push button start. And battery isolator. So we'll hook all those up. There's the back there and uh, a bit of extra safety for in case the car catches fire or rolls over or something. We can get to that. So all these simple to, simple to hook up wires will go to the back of that. And we've got our, our switch panel all done. This is what the inside of the VH is looking like now. Moved all the all the plastics from there, all the um, fan and air conditioning box. So now there's heaps of room here. This is where the air conditioning went through, but now it's a handy little grommet hole, firewall hole that can feed all the wiring through. And so yeah, this is where the ECU will sit, and then this will go up into the dash. We've got all our starter motor wires and um, starter plate. Should we make up a little bracket for now. Should sit in here. So just trying to do a test fit of the engine while we can. So uh, we just want to see how the headers fit and all that. But of course it's uh there's issues and it's tight and we don't even have the gearbox on and we're already having some issues. Passenger side's not too bad, but driver's side, oof. 
I've tried to keep the bubble wrap on so we don't scratch the new paint on the, uh, the chassis or the actual headers. Um, but yeah, it's just every time we lower the engine, it catches here, it catches somewhere else. What a task. You what? What a pain. Just waiting for the hammer to go through a rust hole straight through. Further to the top, Dad, that's where you need it. Up here? Yeah, but not too much more. I think you got it. Good job. So we've tried test fitting the engine to try and get the headers in and just to see where they foul, etc. We had such a hard time we couldn't even really get the engine out on the right spot. But we have faith that next time when we actually put it in for its final time, we'll bolt the gearbox on, the driver side headers, we'll get a load level up which will help us just maneuver the whole thing backwards and forwards. And once it's pretty much in, then we, we it looks like we've got enough room to feed the passenger side uh, headers in. So fingers crossed that works. Else we'll spend another two hours doing it next time.